Just going to do a quick video on try and accept. Um, I don't know what they're called, just functions, clauses. I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's get into it. So let's say you want to make a uh, small program. I, uh, by the way, I did get this from someone else. Um, this, this one bit of code. So let's say you want to make a number and you want it to become equal to the input. Sorry, the the integer of an input that the user has given and you ask them please type in a number okay and then number is going to be equal to that and then we're going to print out number all right nothing dramatic doesn't seem too hard let's see how it goes so I must to type in a number I'm going to type in the number nine and I'll print out nine to the screen. However, if I uh, do this again, and instead of printing out the number nine, um, sorry, typing in the number nine as a number, I just type in nine as a word. We've got an error. We've got a value error specifically, right? What if we want to continue regardless of this value error? Well. What we can do is do a try accept clause and we can try uh, all of this here. So just copy and paste it. it has to be indented by the way, just like a for or a loop or, or an if or whatever you want to do. So we try that and then we accept this error specifically. So it's a value error and just copy and paste this actually from the console. So we can accept a value error and we can print some code, doesn't matter what. Don't know why it's saying invalid syntax. And we'll say that we're going to print invalid number type a number next time, not a word. Okay. And so here. If I print out, if I use the number nine, it'll just print out the number nine, right? That's fine. Let's say um, I use the number 11, but I, I, I type it out as a word. It gives me that warning, invalid number, type a number next time, not a word. So rather than me just having an error and this program being entirely useless, um, I've actually got a response here, which is great. I mean, uh, now I know what's wrong and why it's wrong. If I had more time, I could probably show you a function where, or I could make this into a function and make it so it starts over again, but I'm not gonna do that. Another thing here to know, I'm just gonna copy and paste this quickly, is that accept on its own without an accept value here. Should, I'm just gonna try it. Did I put a word? Yeah, it will probably work actually. So I'll put in the wrong value. So accept on its own will actually take any error and then just respond with this. But really, if we know a specific error is going to occur and it's the specific error we have interest, we should put the error name. So here for the try accept clause, I'll write it out generically and it's going to be try and then generic code to be attempted slash tried. And then we're going to put the accept, accept, and we'll put accept error. I'll put in brackets the error we are looking for or accept like that and then exception code and this is more or less the uh, format that we want to go through now as I say this example is actually borrowed from someone else I've forgotten who it is not because I can't do try and accept uh, clauses or whatever they're called or I'm not used to doing them more because I just couldn't think of simpler examples and Usually I use this for much 
much larger uh, or many more lines of code than this, much more complicated functions. But I have actually thought of something. I've realized that any error that you get except for one, one error, and I'll show you what that is, um, can essentially be accepted. So as long as you type something erroneous, you can try it and accept it. So for example, you might have seen my for loop. So we'll make a list called list P and we'll make it equal to, I don't know, a list full of lists, okay? And at the moment that's empty, right? And we can put one in there, uh, one and two in here, or we could just put one in each of them, okay? Or maybe let, let's put two, yeah, let's, let's put two numbers inside of each. Okay, that's what we'll do. Okay, and we'll say for I in range zero, length list or, or just i uh, actually i in range zero to three for i2 in range we'll say zero to two so the first one's a free iteration and that's going to iterate over every single one of these and the second one's going to iterate for both items inside of this this will cause an error under cer certain circumstances, and that's essentially what we're going for, right? We'll say print out list p i, okay? And then here we'll print list p i i2, right? And that should print out every individual item in the list and then every item in every item in the list, because every item is a list. Okay, so let's do that. And you can see it's worked. I'm going to copy and paste this, and I'm going to change it so it doesn't work. Okay. So, we're going to change this for I in range 0 to 4. Now the problem is there's not four items in here. So the first one's going to be zero, the second eye is going to be one, the third eye is going to be two, and the fourth eye iteration is going to be four. And we're going to ask for the fourth indexed item in this list. Because there isn't, we should have a uh, list index out of range error resulting from this, okay? And we can actually just put a try except in here so we can try this here we should indent it all what we can do is just select it all like this and just press the tab button and that should indent it all at once if it's not already indented which it's not they're checking on the spot not very good not very professional that is it and then we'll accept what's our error an index error index error and we'll just print out simply something went wrong sort your code out okay sort your code out just means make sure he cuts okay you know have a look at your code so we'll run this and it just says something went wrong sort your code out yeah it has actually printed all of this though. Might not print it if I do this though. That might just change that. I'm just gonna I'm just messing around for my own. Yeah, there we go. I knew that wouldn't happen. So there you are. This 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 has not solved our error, but it's made us aware that there is an error. So this actually could be a good way to test for errors, essentially, you know, when you write code to try and accept a good way to practice your try accept statement. So, for example, I can actually copy and paste all this now. And to prove to you that accept doesn't actually need uh, a specific error argument, we can just do that. And there we are. Now I'll show you one error that it can't correct, and I'll just explain that a little bit more. So. 
let's say try um, I don't know fingers equals 10 true now this would make a syntax error because it's not a list it's not a collection so I can't have more than one value and this is just syntactically incorrect okay it's coming up here that I've got an invalid syntax okay so if I try that and I accept it and I print invalid syntax you fool it won't actually print or it shouldn't it didn't last time I tried it so there you go it's just said in fact a valid syntax but this hasn't run so syntax errors um, you can actually accept syntax errors uh, just not the ones that you've made so if there's an error if there's a syntax error in your try statement the accept will not catch that syntax error what this syntax error is actually for or I assume it's probably for is let's say you ask a user to input some Python code or you try and get Python code from a website if that Python code that you ask to implement here in your try statement is invalid then an accept method with an in with a syntax error error that accepts a syntax error error will uh, trigger this however it won't save you uh, from your actual syntax errors that you've made it'll only save you from syntax errors that you receive from running uh, the program not things that are actually from running the code not things that are already pre-typed in the code I'll, sh I'll prove it to you by just specifically yeah there you go so a try and accept is a great way to practice as i've said um, your code to uh, just check your code before yeah a bit before um you put it out there you can put like i said something went wrong sort your code out and the reason why it might be good to have an accept statement without an, a specific error message is because when you commit an error in uh, Python, it always tells you the type of error. If you want to learn about error types and try and figure them out yourself, if you have an accept statement that doesn't take an error type and just prints out something went wrong, sort your code out, you actually have to look in your code for what the error might be. So you know you've committed an error, but you don't know what type it is. So that's, you know, it's a good way to help you to spot errors. But yeah, that's it, you know, just to try accept, you know, you try something, um, if an exceptional error happens, you can handle it here. And that's it, really. Thanks for watching.